This conference will now be recorded. All right, well, we can go ahead and get started since it's a few minutes after 11 here. Um, again, if we could make sure everybody stays muted, that would be helpful just so we don't have um, some of that background noise that might be a little bit distracting. Um, so yeah, let's let's get into it. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Megan Compton. I'm the Marketing and Communications Manager for the BBB, serving Greater Denver and Central Colorado. Glad you could be here with us today for our Torch Awards workshop. Uh, so I just want to give you a little overview of what you can expect uh, for the next hour or so. Um, I run our Torch Awards program for BBB, so I'm going to do just a quick overview of the program, the process, what you can expect um, through the application. And then I'm really happy to say that we have some judges and a past winner with us today who's going to provide some insight um, because they're very familiar with the TORCH program. So they have some best practices to share of what they've seen be successful over the years. So that's going to be some really valuable information to help set your application apart. So what are the TORCH Awards? For those of you that don't know, uh, this is the Better Business Bureau's annual ethics awards event. And so one of the key purposes of the BBB is to celebrate the role models within our business community. And so we do this through our Torch Awards program. And so we have applicants that fill out an extensive application demonstrating your commitment to ethics. And then we narrow it down to finalists and winners that we really put a lot of work into highlighting throughout the year um, so that we can show our community who they can trust, who's going above and beyond, uh, who's doing right by not only their customers, but by their employees, their stakeholders, their vendors, everybody they interact with. That's so important, right? Um, to just be doing the right thing. And so we um, we have been doing the Torch Awards for, well, since 2003. Oh, sorry, PowerPoint's freaking out. <laughs> sorry for any motion sickness. Uh, so since 2003, the Greater Denver B has distributed over 40 Torch Awards. Uh, we currently distribute Torch Awards in three categories. So we give out one small, one medium, and one large business um, award. And so the category that your uh, business would fall into is dependent on the number of employees that you have. We just do that for fairness sake. And so I do want to share with you our hub on bbb.org. And so this is where you'll find all things Torch and everything you need to know about the program so you know what you're getting into. Uh, so the link is go.bbb.org slash Denver Torch. So let's hop in there. There we go. So when you get in there, we've got our little overview page. Um, there's a video that you can watch from our event last year that's kind of fun. Um, and then there's a bunch of different sections up here that you can peruse through. Um, I do want to point out this nominate business section, and that's going to take you to a form here. Uh, so you'll see it's real quick. You just fill out a little bit of information if there's a business that you want to nominate that you think should apply for the Torch Awards. One thing that I do want to point out about this Torch Awards uh, nomination function is that you don't need to be nominated or self-nominate yourself in order to start the application. You can just go ahead and start it. Uh, what this is used for is if you know of another business that you think should apply for Torch, this is where you can fill out their information and it'll get sent straight to me. And then I do all the heavy lifting and I reach out to them and explain what the program is and what the application process is um, to try to encourage them to apply. So hopping back over here, another um, section that I want to point out that is useful to peruse through is uh, our past winners. So we've got videos of our five past winners from, gosh, many, many years past. So that might be good to look through so that you can see um, who's been named a finalist, who's been named a winner, and you'll learn a little bit about their companies with their videos um, so that you can get information and see who's been successful in this process before. Uh, but what I want to spend um, my time going over the most is the application guide up here. That's going to be your best friends through this process. 
And so this outlines all of the eligibility requirements, as well as all of the criteria for the torch award and some general information about how it works. So you do want to uh, make sure that you and ensure that your company is eligible to apply. Uh, so with your business that's won a torch award within the last three years, so 17, 18, or 19, uh, we do not um, allow you to apply just to give some other businesses a chance in there to get some recognition. Um, and any businesses that sponsor or any of our board member companies, any companies that provide a judge, they're ineligible to apply as well. And so just be cognizant that at the time of the application deadline, which is July 20th, uh, by midnight, uh, all businesses that are applying need to meet standards for BBB accreditation. You do not need to be a BBB accredited business. We just ask that you're in good standing with BBB. Um, and so with that, we ask that you've been in operation for at least three years locally, uh, that you don't have any unanswered complaints, and that you have a BBB rating of a B or higher and that your business is located in one of these 12 counties, which is our BBB service area. And so here is where you would go to start your application. And real quick, I won't go into the actual application, but I just kind of want to show you uh, the cool thing about how this is set up is that you create an account with a username and a password. So this way you're able to save and return as many times as you'd like. Um, while you're working on your application. So by no means do you have to go in and sit down and bust it out in one sitting. In fact, we highly recommend you don't try to do that because of the length of the application. Um, and it's kind of nice because then that way you can still go in, even if you hit submit, you're able to go in and edit it after you submit it. So if it's before the deadline and you hit submit and then you think, oh my gosh, I totally forgot about this that I should definitely talk about in that question or whatever, um, you can go in and add that. So that's kind of nice. So I do want to go over the application criteria. This is for the written application. And so this is based on application from our International Association of Better Business Bureaus, because they actually have an international torch award for ethics. So the cool thing is that if you're named a winner locally in the BBB area, um, then you're automatically submitted to the Torch Awards to be um, considered for your international recognition um, in Canada and Mexico also. So that's really cool, a chance to get um, crazy amounts of exposure, um, even more than you'd get if you won locally. So the application, it's these the six criteria, and we've got two questions um, in the application for each one that helps you demonstrate how well your business meets the criteria or exceeds it even better. So the first one is the leadership commitment to ethical practices. And so this is looking at how ethical leaders um, know that positive character traits are an essential guide. Um, so how are they not only communicating the values and the importance of ethics that your organization is based on, but are they actually walking their talk? Are they setting an example for the staff? Are they asking for feedback? Are they open to criticism? Um, how are they working collaboratively to make sure that they're being the best leader that they can possibly be? Criteria two is the communication of ethical practice. And so this is looking at how leaders reinforce a culture of high character ethics. And how does that build a high performance business model? So what are your expectations of ethical practices? And how do you establish accountability to those as a leadership team? Criteria three is leadership practices to unify the organization. And so this is really unifying your staff around your clear purpose. So to me, this is why, 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 which comes back to brand. What's your brand? Why does your business sell or provide what they do? Why do you do it the way that you do? Why do you say what you do? Why do you say it in that way? And so when I think of this, I think of if someone were to ask either the CEO or maybe a customer service specialist who's only been there a few months, 
um, you know, why is ethics important to you? Or why do you guys do this? Why do you say that? That you'd get generally the same answer because the leaders have done a good job of making sure that their staff understand the why behind their organization and why your values are what they are. Criteria four is the organizational commitment to performance management practices. So this is looking more at like staff performance. So this is kind of the concept of, yeah, you can have high character ethics, but do you have high competency and do you have um, high performing teams and results as well? So how do you establish your goals? How do you measure achievement? How do you reward that achievement? Or if you don't, achieve what you want to, what happens then? How do you course correct? And again, how do you hold people accountable? Criteria five is the organizational commitment to ethical human resource practices. This is looking really at your people um, humanistically. So your staff is your biggest asset, right? And um, I know one thing our CEO likes to say is the whole person comes to work. So how are you supporting and recognizing your staff, setting them up for success and making sure that they're growing and developing not only professionally, but personally as well. The final criteria, which I know is a big one um, with our judges for sure, is the organizational commitment to the community. So I think we all know in this day and age that customers really prefer to buy or purchase from businesses that are giving back in some way or doing something other than padding their bottom line. And so this is where we want to see examples of how is your business giving back to the Denver area? Um, what good are you doing in our community? And so this could be anything from do you have a toy drive every year? Do you give your staff paid time off to volunteer? Do you make it a point to hire recently rehabilitated individuals? Uh, the list goes on and on. I've seen so many examples over the years of just some really cool ways um, that businesses do give back to our community, um, which really shows their high ethical um, character. And so I'm sure some of our judges want to talk on that a little bit later because I know they get pretty passionate about that, but it's important, right? So um, like I said, each of these criteria will have two questions, two essay prompts um, that'll help uh, sort of outline your business's fit with each criteria. There will be space for you um, to also submit supporting documentation uh, in the application, which is important because that way you can give examples of what you're saying that you're doing, whether it's a handbook or some of your marketing collateral or whatever it may be. Uh, we do also include links to your website, to your social media, any other information that may live online. Um, that way it just kind of helps back up what you're saying in your essay, right? Um, and giving the judges some really concrete examples uh, to show that you're kind of walking your talk. Um, and so then I do want to just quickly kind of go over the judge process so that um, you kind of know what to expect there um, from when you submit your application to when you can expect to hear back. So the applications are due July 20th. Um, once we receive them, BBB vets them for eligibility and completion. BBB does not have a hand at all in judging the trees. So our judges are comprised of completely independent people from BBB. So they're from the business, um, academia, nonprofit, government, um, communities. And so we have some past winners that judge or people that may have um, a strategic tie to BBB kind of knows who we stand for and um, what we're all about. They're the ones that judge, BBB just facilitates the process. And so once, the, um, once we receive the applications, vet them for eligibility, the eligible applications go out to the judges. Um, and then we get those scores back in late August. And um, once we tally those scores, we will identify the top three, uh, the top highest scoring businesses in each category, the three highest. So that'll give us a total of nine finalists. And so those are the finalists that will get to do some quote unquote face-to-face -face interviews with our judges. Um, this year it will be virtual, but we do invite the finalists to have some with your judges. That way they can ask you some questions. Maybe you can share some information that you didn't put on your written application that you wish you would have shared. Just helps them get to know you a little bit better. And so then after they meet with their finalists, they determine the winner. 
And then the winners are going to be announced on October 15th um, at a virtual Torch Awards celebration. Uh, we've got some really cool things in the works for that. Uh, details are forthcoming, so stay tuned. It'll be a very different year, but still a very exciting year. And so I do want to just finish by giving you a couple general tips that I've gathered through over the years, um, both in my observations, but through judges, just to help you be as successful as you can be, uh, is to make your application as thorough as possible, but make it concise, which I know can sometimes be a tricky balance. But really what the judges want to see is the meat, no fluff. Now we don't need the application to be superfluous or too wordy or by no means think that the longer your essay answer is, the better it's going to look to the judges, right? Um, so just try to get to the point and really try to get to the heart of what you're saying. Uh, again, the supporting documentation and examples are always so helpful um, just to help kind of back up your claims as well as incorporating analytics and statistics as much as you can. It's hard to argue with numbers, right? So um, I think that anytime you can incorporate those, the judges really appreciate that. And it shows that you're going the extra mile to not just saying stuff, but kind of researching your actual performance metrics. And finally, I do want to let you know that judges are free to conduct um, research outside of the application and they often do. So just be cognizant, it's not uncommon for them to look at your social media pages, um, do a Google search on you, whatever else it may be. Um, so just being cognizant of what's out there, right? And so um, that's kind of my overview. I would like to open it up to our judges and past that we have in attendance. Um, thank you so much for being here. This is so awesome that you guys are able to come and provide your insight because I think that's just so invaluable for people who haven't gone through this process before. Um, and so with us, we have Janita Leroy with the Governor's Information of Internet Technology. I might have screwed that up, sorry. <laughs> um, with the Governor's Office, uh, we've got Lisa McAllister of With Good Cause. Um, she's a past winner who wrote the Adventure Dental Vision and Orthodontics application. And sorry, I meant to say Janita, the first one I mentioned, she's a judge. And then we have CJ Larkin with the University of Denver, she's also a judge. So again, thank you so much for being here. And so I'm gonna start with the first question the judges, the so Janita and CJ. Um, what are some of the most important differentiating factors for both the written application, but also the interview process that successful applicants demonstrate? Um, in the interview process, it's important that the president and or CEO of the company come as well as the person that wrote the application and the people that do the actual work. We need to see from the top down what type of a culture you have created. And we can tell that when we see you in person. So um, it's important for them to be a part of that interview process. Um, another thing is don't make us look and dig for the information. So answer all of the parts of the question in the question. Um, assume that we don't know anything about your business or your industry, and you're trying to inform us of it, And but keep all, get all of the points across and all of the details in there. Um, the attachments are helpful, but don't put all of it in one attachment that's 100 pages and expect us to scroll through it we're not gonna do it and then we won't look at anything that you have. So make sure that your attachments are titled appropriately and are um, linked with the questions that they are, that they are supporting. Um, and we will do extra research. We do go to your website. We do go look at your social media and we go back several years on that sometimes to make sure that you didn't try to scrub the last 18 months. So we know what you're doing. Um, so, we, yeah, we, we do look closely on all of that. Assume that we don't know your industry. Explain it well enough so that we are, our interest is peaked, but not so thoroughly that we're bored. 
that's what I, CJ, what would you like to add? Now I'm not muted. I, you saw me nodding the whole time. I totally agree with all of it. <laughs> I, I would I would say a couple other things about the written. I know it's it's tempting, but don't be repetitive. Don't put what you said in answer one and put it over in answer three. Uh, and maybe you might feel like, oh yeah, it still applies, but try to answer each question thoroughly you might include some other stuff but tell us something new because what happens is and this is what i do i think you do too jenny is, is i make a big binder i print out everybody's everything right and i read and if i if my eyes start glazing because i'm not getting really meaningful communication i it doesn't help you and like we're people so you don't need to i mean talk talk to us think you're writing to to any of us right like this is why and here's we did this and i totally agree with don't make me jump around and work too hard to get to get your information um i i i'm a lawyer so i apologize but i i really make sure you answer the question sometimes people yeah. don't answer the question they're answering something else um and that and let me tell you when when megan said don't sit down at one one run through and think you're going to do it you're going to want to do it come back come back come back because you'll start catching some of this oh that's repetitive or that's not very helpful um i think it's i'll just talk about me i don't know about other people but here's what i'm moved by and what i get excited about a company by i get excited about a, cl a really clear mission um, and not just we are here to cert make the best windows ever, right? Okay. But I mean, to talk about what that means with people and community and maybe, you know, what we're with your workforce. Maybe I really wanted to create an opportunity for people to, you know, use these skills or whatever else. But I think we're really, I'm moved by that. I also, I've been in management and I've been an employee and I am really excited when I see a real synergy between management and employees. So, and, and you know, as, as Janita said, don't just, don't just the person who wrote it come. I mean, I think the most, the people who win our, this award tend to have amazing management employee relations and dynamic, right? Um, with the, uh, um, and particularly with their community service. I mean, I don't think like, donating to something is enough right frankly i think you really have to have the more developed your your volunteer work or your 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 programs are and donations too i think the more compelling now the smaller companies probably can't do as much as the bigger companies that's clear right because they don't have the resources but but really look to to not just uh as much as i said answer the questions but also hit us in the heart right show us show us the heart of your company there are a lot of great companies that get nominated for this and many times the differential for the winners is their community service and what they give back to their community not only as people but as a company if it is a culture within the company that you guys that everyone volunteers or that you've taken on a certain um nonprofit as as uh, to be champions for them or something those things have a tendency to um, be the extra points at the very end that that are the exclamation point at the end of an awesome sentence awesome thank you so this question is going to be for Lisa, who's our past winner. Um, let's see if I can get it to come up here. There we go. So how did your staff work together to submit a comprehensive nomination, Lisa? So I really worked with our staff, you know, first of all, I went through the application, all the questions to see what are the resources that I would really need and what are the details um, that uh, I would want to include in the application. And then I just made a comprehensive list of what all that supporting documentation would look like. And I went to each department head, you know, and said, what do we have that documents our policy around, um, you know, how we treat employees in terms of reviews and, you know, what's the process look like and is that documented? I mean, um, I was fortunate that, uh, with Adventure Dental and Vision, um, we had a lot of these policies documented. 
I think it also really gave us an opportunity to look at could it could our policies be more clear and more concise um, and uh, so I just went to each department and I kept a running list of documentation in addition I um, spent time with specific department heads um, interviewing them and just asking them to tell me uh, authentic stories about working um, at Adventure and um, what it's like to serve our patients. Awesome. And I believe this next question is for you as well. Um, how did you articulate your ethical practices on the written application? Because ethics, I think, can be kind of a very vague sort of overarching concept at times. Mm -hmm. Right, and I think um, one of the challenges I really had is that throughout the application, obviously because this is a, an award that's focused on ethics, every question is somehow related to um, ethics in our business. So you have to be really cognizant of not being repetitive and also being cognizant of not just telling someone that you, practice have ethical business practices but actually giving an anecdote um, to demonstrate that and that's where the interviews with um, employees came in really handy for me um, you know I really took a journalistic approach to it uh, where you know I, I recorded those interviews so that when people were telling me these authentic stories I could take those almost like sound bites to support those questions. Otherwise, you know, you're going to keep saying repeatedly, um, "We practice, you know, we have ethical business practices because we're honest, because we're trustworthy, because we always tell the truth." I mean, that doesn't really demonstrate how you're doing it. And um, I think that you'll find, I mean, while this takes a lot of time and effort. Um, what you'll find is that those stories that you end up writing, you're going to use in other areas of your business. You're going to use them for recruiting purposes. I mean, we ended up coming, you know, out of writing this application or writing this nomination, we um, came up with a lot of ideas about how we could use these stories to, um, you know, show people what it's like to work at a venture and why we stand out and how we can really attract high quality employees that um, are aligned with our mission. Could, could I jump in on that? Because I just think Lisa, that is excellent and reminded me of some things. So examples are everything, right? Cause I, I mean, you know, you know, the old saying, don't tell me, show me, it's kind of do that. Right. And it would yeah. be great then if you did had more than one example. Like if you try to plumb the same example for every category, probably not going to help you. And and what I've, and you know, we get a little tired of it and we think, I guess that's the only example you got, which is not true. Right. So what you were saying, Lisa, what, I, what I've seen in a couple times is you, you really got a sense. We got this from the interview that people said, we, this was such a great experience us doing this because we talked to each division and we can't and we you know some things I didn't know that whoever the writer is doesn't necessarily know everything and they felt like it really was a synergistic reaffirmation of of where they were and so if you can get I mean it would be great if you could have a separate example for every question that we ask you that may be too much but don't feel bad if it's like hey we just realized this a week before we submit it that's okay oh. I mean it, it's a great per you know it's a great process All right, and then the final question is for all of you. So speaking from your personal experience, both as a judge and past winner, what's the most valuable tip for success that you can give to applicants that they should keep in mind throughout the process? Ooh. Well, we've given you a lot of information today already. I would say, when writing this nomination and filling out this application, um, make it as conversational as possible. Let the personality of your company shine through. Don't fill it out like you're writing a white page or a one page dissertation on 
your company. Make it conversational so that we care that we're, we're pulled into the story about your company. And also to reinforce what CJ said earlier, answer what is asked in the question. If you write two or three paragraphs and it's all written beautifully, but it didn't provide any answers for what you that, that we just asked, we're going to be like, oh, they don't know how to do this and we're going to write it off. So make sure that you answer the question completely and honestly. Lisa, why don't you go next? Sure. So uh, I would say, first of all, like this is, this was one of the most challenging um, nominations that I have ever written, I would say, um, for the reasons that we were talking about, like, uh, you don't want to be repetitive. You want these, you know, specific examples um, for every question. And so give yourself plenty of time and um, so that, uh, you know, you have time to, for your team to get back to you and that sort of thing. So people don't feel um, rushed. I mean, I mean, it sounds so simple, but I know we put things off to the last minute. I've done it um, a million times that, you know, as a deadline's approaching, but it really is um, a process so that you want to give time so that it's authentic and um, thoughtful. Um, the other thing I would say is, you know, when you ha when you think about ethics and how that applies to your business, um, I kind of just had um, always top of mind a few um, like keywords like transparency and and um, you know how we support each other. Um, in terms of teamwork that we always um, assume good intent from our teammates like those key things that are happening at adventure every day I wanted to make sure that that was constantly coming through in each of my answers and it really helped for me to just kind of have that um, top of mind that those are the things I wanted to communicate so that I could kind of check myself that beyond answering the question did I communicate who we really are as a company um, in terms of transparency and teamwork and that sort of thing. I'd like to say a couple more things, but Megan, I can see you're going to ask someone to mute themselves because they are scruffling. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If everyone could please make sure that you're muted just so we don't have any background, that would be great. Voila. So um, a couple things I wanted to follow up with what Lisa said about ethics, you know, clearly maybe the most important thing. And so one way to think about it is a lot of directions of ethics, ethics between management and employees, right? Um, ethics between employees, ethics between your company and consumers. And one thing I would just caution, and this is a, as a former criminal lawyer, sometimes we've gotten more information about individuals. <laughs> like we had a client who stole something or we, we had a, uh, an employee who stole something and like, don't tell me who they are. Or, you know, so you might want to talk about, we had a problem or we had a challenge. Just be sure that it's, 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 it's a private thing. I mean, even though it's just between us, I, it just made me go, crazy but so so be careful because that's an ethical thing right making sure that you're not sharing information that you shouldn't um i want to say a little something about the interview and this is my prejudice so you know just if you see me there man you know that this is true of me i really like i mean i know some companies are very hierarchical just the way it is but i enjoy the most when we're in the session and we can feel like there's just camaraderie and positivity between whoever, all the people that are there, right? Like we could think, oh, this company really sounds great, but man, they kind of got a harsh attitude, right? Uh, so if you can fake that during the 20 minutes, that I'm kidding. Hopefully it would be really true that you are, that you are generally cool. And, and the final thing I'd say, and I think that I, I know of at least one case where you guys being here today, or if you're listening to this later, taking the time to listen to this, will make you do a much better job. I mean, with the, the ones that some of the, some of the applications that we thought were the greatest, turns out there are people who came and, and really tried really hard to, to sort of see where is it Brett. So 
that's it for me. And let, let me add in that your work will be worth it because we will put in the work too. We set aside a lot of time to read all of the work that you do. We review all of the documentation that you attach. We do additional research on your company as well. So um, put the time in because we will too. Yeah, let me say one thing. Even though that's true, I've we've seen some companies that were great, but we could tell they just didn't put much effort into their application. And that 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 count, counts down, even though they were yeah. great in lots of ways. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much for all of that awesome information. So um, I would like to open it up if anybody uh, here has some questions. Um, for myself or Lisa, CJ, or Janita, um, we'd be happy to answer those. We're going to take those through the chat function. So you'll see um, on your GoToMeeting toolbar, there's the little um, talk bubble. So just click into that. I'll read any questions that come through, and then whoever feels like they're best equipped to handle that question can jump in. In the meantime, I would like to outline these important dates. Uh, so the applications, again, are due July 20th by midnight. Uh, the finalist interviews with your panel of judges will be the week of September 9th, depending on which category uh, you fall into. And then that Torch Awards virtual celebration will be October 15th. All right, so do we have any questions from anybody? Anything that didn't get covered? All right, we've got one from Beth coming in. So if the person filling out the form, so doing the written application is the CEO, should they bring a few employees to the interview with them? Yes. Absolutely. How can you get the warm and fuzzy if it's you by yourself? I mean, Beth, we can see that great wall of books behind you, and you've got a great smile, and I'm sure you're wonderful, but we like to watch the interaction with you and your employees. We can pick up on the culture and um, the um, authenticity of you and your employees and your company by just viewing you and seeing you. Totally agree. Thanks. Can I just be curious, Lisa, what did you think about your interview? Do you have any recommendations from that experience? Was it scary? Mm -hmm. There you go. Well, I wasn't in the interview. We had our um, CEO, one of our doctors, and then our practice manager. And I think that was, and we were very strategic about who went into the interview to kind of give three perspectives of the company. And, um, and I think our team is just so close and um when they came out of the interview they felt like they nailed it they felt like when they speak passionately about our mission like they can't fail sort of thing you know so that was great lisa what was so brilliant about that is that i know and i've, I've been in at least one session with janita which was really fun um we might ask you the craziest question like well like how does shipment work and you're like I have no idea. But I mean, I'm not saying you right. got to have everybody who does everything. But sometimes it's just they give such a different impression and they may have more information. I don't know how big your business is or whatever else. But I really think that's helpful because mm -hmm. not that it's bad if you don't know everything, but it's kind of nice that somebody can say, oh, let me tell you about that. Yeah. Yeah. D the different layers of your company being there to show the different perspectives, not only to answer the questions, but for us to see how you guys interact. Um, it all plays into it. All righty. Well, I don't see any other questions coming through, um, but thank you all for your time for being here i did record this so i will put this um on the torch awards hub page probably on that application guide page um that i had gone over earlier um so you can review it there if you'd like to and of course don't ever hesitate to reach out to me directly with any questions you may have 
um, happy to help in any way that I'm able to. And thanks again, Janita, CJ, and Lisa. Um, hey, hey Megan, I think Beth had another question. She's holding her hand. Oh, up. there is one more. Um, is it better to focus on the past year or is it okay to give examples from several years? Both. Sure, it doesn't have to be it, the most recent. It doesn't have to be. Yeah, CJ's right. It doesn't have to be the most recent story. Give us the best story, the one that showed how you worked through it and that is the most compelling and that will pull out that emotion. Give us the best story to answer the question, not necessarily the most recent. And I really agree with that. I also think that sometimes the history of the company and sort of how you developed and grew and maybe faced some adversity and had to take a pivot, I, I think that could be interesting too, right? So um, I guess both, which shows you all the writing you're going to have to do. But uh, yeah, yeah, I think both would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Good questions. Um, yes, I see that we've got a question from Matt who's saying Denver is not our only market. Can we give examples from other areas? You have can we just ask that you make sure Denver is one of your markets? And I would wonder, Megan, if I was them then. So, like, let's say they're in Cleveland, Denver, and LA. If they do, if they do community work, it would be. It, we would want to know about the community work they did in the other cities too if it if you know because it might be that's where they've developed it or do we only want the community stuff they've done in Denver um or no I would them. say that definitely include any community do any community work you do in any market that you work in um, how many applications do you typically see in the small business category um, it's varied from here um, I believe last year we had about 20 in the small business category. And then Jason's asking, is size determined by Denver only or do we include other offices we have nationwide? So we just um, determine it by your Denver location only, by what category you fall into. And is there a size limit of employees for a business to apply? Absolutely not. No problem. And then Jared's asking how many employees determine small versus medium versus large. So small is if you have one to 19 employees, medium is 20 to 49, and then large is 50 or more. again everybody I'll be sticking around here for a few minutes you know as people are hopping off to answer any more questions or anything else that may come up thanks everyone <laughs> bye bye have a great day